Hey, we're Lifehouse, and you've arrived at Soundcheck, brought to you by Dove Hair Care. Be sure to check out our new album, Smoke and Mirrors, right here at walmart.com. New reinvented Dove with Fiber Actives takes care of the damage. Available at Walmart. You were always hard to hold. To let it go ain't easy. I'm hanging on for broken coats. When my mind is leaving, talk, talk is cheap. Give me her word, and you can keep. It took a year and a half to make this record, and we're really happy with it. The album's called Smoke and Mirrors. Smoke and Mirrors was the first track that we recorded for the record. What we wanted to do in the beginning was to kind of capture the essence of what we've been doing live over the course of the last three years on our last record, Who We Are. And we realized we were missing kind of the big piece that keeps Lifehouse alive, which is, you know, the radio. So we started getting back to the record-making process and, you know, creating these radio-friendly pop songs. So those songs infused with the, uh, you know, the live rock songs kind of ambiguously ties into the title Smoke and Mirrors. Like Bryce said, we felt like we had our, our pop songs and our rock songs covered, but we wanted to see if we could fuse the two together, you know, for, for an up-tempo kind of four-on-the-floor type of song. And it was a really inspiring day, and Halfway Gone was written in, you know, two and a half to three hours. And uh, we really felt like we accomplished what we uh, had set out to accomplish in Halfway Gone. We had a lot of influences on this record pulled from Tom Petty and a lot of classic rock stuff, but at the same time listening to, you know, obviously Kevin Rudolph, who we worked with, and other, you know, present pop songs. And, you know, we just wanted to raise the bar on this record and make sure that we made the best record we possibly could, and we're proud of this record. I feel like sonically we really experimented on this record as well. I know Bryce uh, experimented with some synth basses, Rick uh, bought an MPC, and so there's some more electronics going on on this album. And predominantly in the past, it, it, we've made just two guitars, bass, drums, and vocals, that kind of organic record, you know? So I feel like we've kind of pushed the sonic space a little bit, and it, that keeps it interesting and fresh for us as well. The whole process has been completely different than any record I've ever made in the past. I've, I co-wrote with the guys for the first time on this record on a song called Wrecking Ball. Did a lot of... Uh, co-writing with Jude Cole, who's our manager producer for the last two records. Like you said, Chris Daughtry, Kevin Rudolph. I just feel like I was at the point in my life where I needed a different vantage point uh, to write from. So it was a, a learning curve for me, but I think a, a necessary one. Do we know what song is first? Does anyone know? I think this tour, we're really focusing on stepping up our live show. We're really proud of our live show. We, we pride ourselves on being a great live band. Uh, we've been working really hard in rehearsals to uh, step that up even, even more for this run. We're going out with Daughtry here for, for a few months. We're uh, special guesting on the tour. So we're just really proud of our new record. We're going to play a lot of those new songs. Um, and we're going to head out maybe in the summertime for a headlining tour where we're going to bring a bigger production, a bigger light show, and you're going to see a bigger life house. You know, I feel like we're one of the few bands that actually, when we get off the road, two days goes by and we actually call each other and see, you know, invite each other over for barbecues or for dinners or, or whatnot. And on the road, I think a lot of bands get really sick of each other, and, and that's what breaks up most bands, is just the personality conflicts. And I think that we're really lucky that, you know, we're four guys that actually like to hang out with each other, and that's 90% of being out on the road. You're on stage for 75 minutes, and then you're living in a tour bus together, you know? So we are very fortunate that we all 
uh, enjoy each, other, each other's company. It's kind of like summer camp all year long. You just pack a bunch of dudes on a tour bus and you got your candy drawer and your chips and, <laughs> you know, your showers. It's fun. We have amazing fans that have, there's a core group of, of them that have been following us for the last 10 years. So it's really interesting to, to uh, you know, seven years later show up in Milwaukee and you'll see some of the same faces that have been following you from the beginning. You know, we're very fortunate in that sense to have fans that have grown with us as the band has grown. A lot of our fans have been, you know, involved recently online, and I think that's a big part of the music industry these days. It's not like it was in the 70s when all you do is look at the record, and that's as close as you get to your, you know, your favorite band nowadays. You connect online, and our fans have been really involved on Twitter and MySpace and Facebook. We asked them what they thought would be a great next single, and they all, you know, put in their two cents. And um, you know, it's just good to kind of have that interaction. It's healthy. We get to play music for a living. I think that's the, the, I pinch myself every day that we actually get to do this and get paid for it. And I, it's just a huge gift and we're very, very grateful to be doing this for 10 years and still enjoying the whole recording process and uh, touring. I think that when bands get to the point where they're not having fun anymore and they're not enjoying it, they need to like learn how to golf or fish or something because there's tons of other bands that would kill to be in their position. So we're, we're really fortunate that we're still having a lot of fun uh, doing what we do. My personal favorite right now is Halfway Gone. I really think that it's something really fresh for the band. It sounds different than anything we've ever recorded before, and uh, it's a lot of fun to play live, too. My favorite's a song called All In. It was the first song on the record, which was kind of weird because it was the last song we recorded. And uh, it kind of kicks off the record in, in a way that shows you know, how we've grown and just has this lightning electricity to it. My favorite track on the record is a track called Nerve Damage. And it's, it's that kind of track that as a, as a rock band, if you can record one of those in your career, you're, you're super stoked because we pretty much came in and captured it live all in, all in the room. And it's kind of, I got, I got a perfect chance to kind of do my best John Bonham impersonation on that track. I got two favorites. I got to agree with Ricky on Nerve Damage. I just, I love the rock in that song. It's so organic and so real and playing that every night's awesome. And uh, I got to sort of switch between that and Had Enough. It's just a really well-crafted pop song that rocks. Okay, guys, right here on me. Two, three. Good, two, three. Let's keep it right here. I'm carrying a ping pong ball. Now that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know why. It's random. Is I need to play with something. Foosball? I'm more of a ping pong guy. I mean, I'm pretty good at foosball. I, I can beat him, but... He definitely can beat me. Beautiful guys right there. Hold it there. Terrific. 